There's some pr pretty strange words in that portion of the scripture, ain't there? Think about what he's saying there. He's not saying stay away from heathens or or sinners, you know, what you read a lot about in God's Word. He's saying, stay away from Christians who act a certain way. Right. Stay away from other believers who are acting a certain way. Now, before I get into this morning's message, I want to point out what this was referring to. These were people that knew that Christ was returning, but because they knew Christ was going to return someday, they used that as an excuse to do nothing. We can come up with pretty good excuses, can't we, to do nothing? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not too hard for us to say, why should I bother doing this when this is going to happen? Why should I bother working on my program when I can just pray and God will fix it? You remember that story about the guy on the flood on the roof? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Guy's a flood, there's a roof, he's praying, God save me, God save me. You know, some guy comes by and a canoe says, jump in. He says, no, God's going to save me. And then there's a motorboat and he doesn't get in and says, no, it's okay, God will save me. Then the helicopter comes and he says, come on, get in. He says, no, God's going to save me. So the waters come up, he drowns, he goes to heaven. He says, God, what happened? I thought you were going to save me. He goes, what do you want me to do? I sent a canoe, a boat, an airplane, yeah. a helicopter. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. We have to work on things. Yes, we communicate with God and we ask God for help. And man, He will take away things that need to be removed. But when He's sending a boat and a helicopter, we need to get in. We need to do something. We have these phase books for a reason, right? It's an opportunity for us to work through what got us here. As we communicate with God and we're asking God for help, He gives you the book, the phase book, to help you look at what's gotten you here so that you can make changes in your life. When we get on our knees and we pray, God, help me, He sends help. But we got to participate, don't we? we got to get busy. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your word. I pray, Father, that we recognize what we have to do. We have to get busy. There's things that we have to do in order to grow. Deliverance is real and we are freed. The bondage is gone, the, the chains are gone, and, and, and we, we can get up and we're fresh and we're new, Lord. But now it's time to get busy. We have to work. So help us, Lord, this morning to see how important it is for us to do our part. As you speak to our hearts and our minds, Lord, help us to be honest with ourselves and own, own the information, the direction that you will be giving us. Help us, Lord. Speak to me, Father, the words that you would have me to share this morning. Speak through me, but also speak to me the words that I need to know for my own personal self today. We all need to hear from you right now. And as your Holy Spirit moves, Lord, I pray that our minds and our hearts are wide open. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for meeting our needs in this way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, the TVs don't work. Sitting in a chair watching the TV, that don't help, right? You can spend all the time in the world on a computer playing games or video games upstairs. That don't work, right? And above all, doing nothing at all does not work. Something has to be done where we are participating really constantly in doing something that's positive for us. Something other than negative and something other than nothing at all. You know, I'm not saying that there's not time to relax, because there is. We all need time to back away. Soon or some guys are going to a retreat, right? Sometimes we need to retreat from the daily hustle and bustle so that we can really focus on, on God a little bit more. But for the most part, every day, man, every day, we need to stay in a constant, conscious contact with God, allowing Him to speak to our hearts about the changes that need 
to be made in our lives, and then we need to move forward. We need to be participating in that change. 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we give you this command in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says here in this version, it says, Stay away from all believers who live idle lives and don't follow the tradition that they received from us. At some point, if they're just idle, not doing anything, I, I would, you know, there's no such thing as standing still, is there? You're either moving forward or you're moving back. If you're going to be sitting still for a certain amount of time, this thing goes crazy, don't it? We start putting so much junk up there about how we can do this, do that, and the other thing. You know, it's the devil's playground. Is that I, I've heard called that before. Yeah, devil's workshop. Yeah, devil's workshop. It's true, isn't it? Yes, sir. If we're not thinking out, it, I mean, the more time we spend in God's Word, the less time we have to spend looking at garbage. Yes, sir. Garbage in, garbage in. Uh, boy, there's a whole lot of sayings in this one, isn't there? We need to be constantly doing the things that we know are right in God's eyes. Because if not, we're just sitting around. We're going to be doing things that we think are right in our own mind. And our own mind can take us to some pretty crazy places. You're not going to gain anything by doing nothing. As a matter of fact, if we're doing nothing, it leaves too much time to do just the opposite. You know, we have to be participating in our relationship with God. And in this scripture, it's telling us to stay away from the people that aren't. So then we need to stay around who? People that are. We need to be with like-minded people that are going in the same direction, that are busy so we can stay busy with them. Galatians 6 1. Dear brothers and sisters, if any believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. We says it says in what? In step 12, right? Okay. To go out and, and, and share this message with other people that need it. But what? It also has a warning there, doesn't it? Right? To make sure that you're not pulled into it, right? I don't take myself, you know, the Salvation Army for years is known for this, where they'd go to bars, go in and try to evangelize guys that are sitting on a bar stool. Now, when I was sitting on a bar stool, you weren't talking to me about anything about who's going to buy me the next drink. But they were trying. They were doing something. Now, those of us, especially in early recovery, I don't think we're going to go into the bars and try to pull people out and drag them to a meeting. They're in a bar. They're in an active addiction. It's kind of silly for us to do that. Um, but the temptation is real, isn't it, to instead sit down next to them and order a drink. See? So we should be trying to reach out to each other. We should be working to help each other. But we also then first need to make sure that we are right. We are strong. That our relationship with God is strong. Be strong and do what you need to do. It says then in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 3, 7, For you that for you know that you ought to imitate us, Right? We ought to be with the people that are doing what is right, and we ought to be trying to do the same thing. We are not idle when we were with you. We never accepted food from anyone without paying for it. We worked hard day and night so that we would not be a burden on any of you. We certainly had the right to ask you to feed us, but we wanted to give you an example to follow. Even while we were with you, we gave you this command. <laughs> Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. Wow. 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 There's two things, too, that we can look at here. You know, first I talked about an idle mind. But first, I, want, I, I think this is more about idle hands. It says here in the Life Recovery Bible, Apparently many of the Thessalonian believers had stopped working in anticipation for Christ's return. Mm -hmm. Their false understandings had led them to live irresponsibly. So Paul told these believers to get back to work. If they refused to work, they would have to face the consequences. They shouldn't eat. 
Since God has promised to help us in recovery, we might be tempted to think that we can sit idly by and watch it happen. <coughs> this is not the case. We need to participate in the plan God has for us. We don't, if we don't take necessary steps of faith, we will have to face the consequences of failed recovery. <coughs> Unless we are participating in the process, we're not really in it. Even though we've been delivered from it, we sit in a, a facility like this with a structured environment and you have to give urines and you breathalyze when you come in. You know, there's some structure there. So you've been removed from an active addiction. But if you just come in and go through the motions here, you're going to leave here the same person you were when you walked through the door. There has to be real soul searching. There has to be real work that you participate in between you and God and between you and the people that God put in your life right. in order for this change to come about, yeah. in order for you to become stronger in your faith and in your walk so that when you walk out the door, the structure falls away, you have already built up what you need to overcome the temptations of the world. <clears throat> you can't just come in here and go through work therapy. You know, and, and this is referring to work. It ain't talking about work therapy. It's talking about the real work that you have to do. The real work that you have to do inside. Not just going to class and sitting there, you know, listening to everybody. Not just going to meetings because you have to make a certain amount of meetings every week. But actually taking a part, you know, taking, uh, participating, taking part in the program that God has put in your life. Because you can't just sit still and expect it to happen. You have to participate in it. It's about owning what's going on, owning who you are, recognizing your relationship with God, and allowing Him then to speak into your mind and heart the information that you need to change, but also doing it. Right, Jerry? Didn't you pray about that earlier? <clears throat> not just listening, and not even just knowing, but doing. Doing. Verse 11 says, Yet we hear that some of you are living idle lives, refusing to work and wasting time, meddling in other people's business. See, there it is. What happens when we live idle lives? This goes. This thing goes, man. We start looking at what everybody else is doing. We just sit back and, and watch. I remember when I was a kid, I used to do this. I used to go to the mall just to sit there and watch all the crazy people walk by. Boy, look at that guy. Oh, he's crazy. Maybe if I was doing something a little more productive, I wasn't worried about the crazy person walking by. I could have been working on my own self. It's the same thing here. You know, we're quick. We're quick, aren't we, to sit, sit out there in that smoke shack looking at the next guy and th talking about what he needs to do. Meanwhile, we're not doing anything in our own lives. Wow. We go to meetings, do the same thing. Don't you hear that 12-step meeting? You get up and you all go out and then everybody's sitting there smoking, talking about, do you hear that guy? <laughs> do we not do that? We need to be worried about what's going on in here between us and him. <coughs> Because if not, then we're worried about what everybody else is doing. We're meddling in other people's lives. Boy, you hear that in churches too, don't you? Gossip. Wow. wow. It says, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we appeal to such people. No, we command them. Settle down and get to work. Earn your own living. And I say the rest to the rest of you, dear brothers and sisters, never get tired of doing what is good. Never tire of it because you're busy. You're busy doing what's good. And like I said earlier, man, this comes through a change of who we are. We come into a relationship with God, man, and we can't help but want to give back, really. When we take a look at what he's doing in our lives, the fact that we used to be the person we were and now we're not anymore, we should want to give back, right? You know? It's pretty important. That's why you set up chairs in a 12-step meeting or make the coffee. You know, it helps you to feel a part of. Mm -hmm. But it also helps not only us, it helps the other person too. 
they get to see that we're doing something and they think, you know what, I should do something too. It's the same thing in our Christian walk. Like if we're just sitting around in a chapel going to church on Sunday morning and afterwards talking about how so-and-so didn't make it to church because she's out sinning. We do that stuff, man. We got to let it go. We got to let it go. Some Thessalonians have begun meddling in other people's business. This practice is extremely destructive to the process of recovery. Not only does it breed discouragement among, among the people being bothered, but it also keeps us from examining our own life as we should. Instead of taking inventory on our own life, we focus on the lives of others. Paul exhorted this to the Thessalonians to set things straight and to live in the power of God. If we didn't, if they didn't, their gossiping lifestyle would cause them to shrink away from their own recovery while also discouraging others. We need to be busy doing what is right. The more time we spend doing what is right in God's eyes, the less time we have for meddling in the affairs of others, the less time we have for being uh, uh, <clears throat> obsessive over temptations until we give in to them. Amen. Right? Because we're spending time thinking about what God wants for us and sharing that with others. Actually doing it. Participating in the process. You know, we, we need to get ourselves right. We need to get ourselves to a place in life where we are okay. We recognize God for who He is. We allow Him to work in our lives. And then we share that with others. It's the only way that we can continue to move on because there's another very famous saying in recovery and it's the same in our Christian work, in our faith. You can't keep it unless you what? You give it away. It's part of the process. It's a requirement to participate in recovery. It's a requirement to participate in our walk Right? in our faith, in our relationship with God. It requires participation. Just as these people were just thinking, well, Jesus is coming soon. He's coming back soon. I ain't got to worry about doing anything. We can get caught up in the same attitude. You know? I ain't got to worry about anything. I'm in a safe place. I don't have to worry about anything. You know, I'm dealing with myself. I ain't got to worry about anything. But yet when we leave here, we're not ready. We need to get and stay busy. We need to come into that relationship with God and allow Him then to not only lead us, not only give us the information, but we need to follow. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You for these words. I thank you, Lord, because we need to hear it. It's easy for us just to leave this chapel and go sit in front of the TV. Yes, sir. It's easy for us to just get up, go through the motions, just to get through the day. And we leave this place the same person we were when we walked through the front door. Lord, help us. Help us get honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. You are speaking to our hearts and our minds. You're giving us the information that we need, Lord. So we can receive it. And we might even believe it. But unless we're living it. Unless we're following the information that you've given. We're applying it to our lives. And we're doing it. Lord, we're going to come up short. So help us, Lord, this morning to be honest with ourselves. As you speak to our hearts and our minds just now, Lord, I pray that we are completely honest and open, Lord, and as you speak to us, Father, help us to recognize the plan that you've laid out for us. You've made it possible for us to draw close to you, into a close personal relationship with you through your Son, Christ Jesus, whom you've given to us as a sacrifice for our sins, so that we can put them behind us and become new, Lord. And I pray, Father, that each one of us recognizes this truth. 
that we admit before you that we are sinners. And there's nothing we can do to save ourselves but to accept from you that gift, which is your son Christ Jesus, who was tortured and dragged through the streets and nailed to a cross as the sacrifice for our sins. He paid that price because we're not able to. Help us, Lord, to accept that. Help us to accept Christ into our hearts as our personal Savior, repenting of our sins, never wanting to go back to them, recognizing them, and not wanting to participate in those behaviors anymore, Lord. We come to you now. And I thank you, Lord, for that. For salvation is real. Deliverance of sin is real. And Father, I also thank you that when Christ ascended into heaven, he promised us a counselor, which is the Holy Spirit, who helps us, Lord, in our lives as we move forward, Lord, helps us to see sin for what it is, helps us to see temptation for what it is, Lord, so that we might recognize it and we have an opportunity to make a decision to turn away from it. And Lord, there might be things in our lives, Lord, that you pointed out to us through your Holy Spirit that we are still participating in. Father, and I pray that you help us this day to lay them at your feet. Christ has paid the price for our sins, Lord, so help us to lay them at your feet now, Lord, so that we might move past them, so that we can continue to grow. And Father, most of all, this day as we looked at, at this portion of Scripture, Father, if we recognize the fact that we are just sitting around doing nothing, mm -hmm. help us, Lord. Help us. Help us to get up off the couch. Help us to get up off of out of our comfort zone, wherever that might be, Lord, and do something. Help us to participate in our relationship with you. To get to stay busy doing what is right so that our idle minds are idle no longer, so that our idle hands are idle no longer, so that we are busy constantly doing what is right in your eyes. Help us, Father. Lord, I thank you for, for meeting our needs in this way. I thank you, Lord, because I know this is truth. And I know that it's truth for each person here, Father. I just pray that each one of us recognizes and accepts and follows your will for our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, guys, you going to get busy? Yeah. You going to do something? Yeah. All right. <laughs> get busy.